This is the Slinger, ladies and gentlemen. I was looking for a wing which was able to carry my GoPro. Because when you have a GoPro, you want to use it, right? And you see, there's space for it. So, let's buy it. Just FPV. I talked to a good friend and he was able to print the stuff for me and sent me the box with lots of plastic parts, as you can see. Well, that's how it looks, or should look like, when it's assembled. Let's hope it will live up to the task. And that's not an easy one for me, because I have some expectations. <laughs> see, uh, I want to carry a GoPro, I want a small wing with it, it's versatile, I want it to be, um, well, able to land and not to break into bits and pieces and of course it should be controllable well ah digital fpv of course and uh, enough for the win the gopro itself is a gopro 11 and the newest and the baddest and the heaviest the servos are as they fit in the emax ones and the ichin motor which is a rebranded one uh, should do the job I will tell you a little bit about the assembly of the wing and it's not that big problem to do, just uh, showing some random pics along while I'm talking about it. After some try and error the print quality turned out to be really good. My mate uh, Michael did a really good job as you can see here. Look at these small and fine lines, yes that's how we want it. Next up were the wings and uh, Titan Dynamics would like to have you putting all those rod all the way through. I decided to cut the edges and spare the rod because um, that was more convenient and I uh, had to do them less flimsy as I had size issues. As mentioned the assembly was straightforward, some press nuts like here and some glue here and there and there you go. The canopy, the stuff, the fuse large, everything goes to well together right well. Heading over to servos, uh, I checked with these ones and as mentioned I took the Emacs ones after that and got satisfied with the result. Here you see the ESC which is rated 45 amps and uh, it has installed BLHLES by default but uh, I flashed BlueJ on it. Yeah, it looked like a mess when you put all that together on the fly, but that's how it is. With all our weight on upon one kilo, we should have a hard time to land that thing, but we'll find out soon. This is the launch of the Slinger. And we will just sling it and we'll hope to get it back in one piece. You know, the usual, usual thing we do when we do. So hang on. Well, we'll narrate this later, I guess. We did the first checks, uh, GPS fix has been established and uh, now it comes to the horrible part where we'll throw the thing in the air and let's see if it launches. I know 6 installed all the defaults, all the good stuff. Yeah, I'll stop rambling, we'll stop flying. Good idea. <laughs> As you can tell by the movement of the camera, it's quite breezy that day and uh, well, <laughs> we'll figure out that not everything is as good as it looks. interesting flight. Um, we made it more compact than it was before. So you see here my gluing uh, perhaps didn't make it uh, to the end of the day and uh, <laughs> well I just have to re-glue it. That's no big deal. Um, no serious damage though. Just um, the usual stuff that happens and uh, well we can now have a look at what happened and I can tell what happened. Uh, apparently we had too little thrust on this thing and um, I will have to adapt on that next time. <sighs> yeah, well, uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye. You'll see the impact <laughs> result here in detail. You can see the gluings just went off. Nothing big to worry about. Everything is here. And yeah, the front part got off and we bounced on the camera mount. Uh, simply cut in half. Nothing bad after all. But this is bad. This is really bad. 
So uh, I decided to repair as much as I could and it was not bad at all to do this and I called my friend Michael and said Michael I need some spares, uh, set of parts uh, would be good to have in, uh, with a little infill please, thanks and he just went on and did it. And in this print as mentioned it got all better. The fuse large parts uh, went much more rigid as it had the desired uh, infill and wasn't too heavy. We got a second one which is 10% infill, this is pretty heavy, double weight, but I'll tell you about it later. So uh, the story continues with uh, the next try, we will launch again, or at least we try. As mentioned, we tried. <laughs> Uh, we had some starting issues with settings and uh, at least through it with uh, auto launch it didn't manage to level up. Watch. Yeah, look, he's trying to level up but he hasn't the authority. The elevator needed to get more authority, definitely. It was too little. And then we went to the field a third time. <laughs> I was a bit curious about how this would turn out this time because I hadn't flown a lot lately and uh, well uh, crashed 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 and didn't fly so you start to uh, make your mind if you just lost your skills. <laughs> well um, my good old wingman uh, helped me out once more and uh, I'm so glad he did because without him I didn't go anywhere. So uh, despite the lens on this Xiaomi Yi is a bit worn out, uh, please excuse that, uh, we will launch in a second and watch it. Let's get rid of the motor noise and the wind of course and talk about what we see here. So this is uh, the sling of flying for the first time. <laughs> or let's say the first time we managed to get it up there. And that was pretty straightforward. It tilted massively to the left on launch. That could be the torque roll because of the motor and the 7 inch prop which is installed. Um, as we mentioned uh, first time we perhaps had uh, too little thrust. Second time we had too little authority on the elevator. And this time everything matched out. I changed the prop to a 7x4 gem fan flash, I'll link that in the description of course. And uh, of course uh, we did uh, some more authority on the elevators by putting the rods two steps down. That helped a lot. And yes, we flew, ladies and gentlemen, we flew. And uh, don't get this wrong, this is INF 6.1 not stabilized. This is manual mode. And uh, for that, and it's not tuned, it's pretty good. This was line of sight, of course, and uh, we are going to land now. And you can see it's gliding, 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 and it's a bumpy road here. But hey, we made it safe and sound. I was lucky to have my wingman to take some pictures and uh, some clips while I'll do a flyby like this here. And you can see it, uh, it handles as predictable as it can be. Like the sound, nothing too offensive, nothing too loud. And uh, the most important thing was it was in control, it was flying well. And yes, I, I was happy to be flying again. So yeah, this is still me pushing the wing all around the area, line of sight. And uh, hoping not to offend too many people walking around. And check, yes, I was curious. Did INF6 have the things it takes to make this wing fly? well level stabilized when I tell it to uh, and so I try to put it into cruise mode and yes yes ladies and gentlemen it did and I was so happy it's delighting to have um, stabilization turned on when you fly in line of sight because um, it's much more easier to get uh, to keep control on that because you can uh, fly a bit further you don't have to make your mind if you uh, are tilting too much or whatever it happens it will level out and help you of course so just uh, keep it flying you can see my distance is increasing now like I have stabilization on I can easily turn and I'm still in control I really like that it was time to land and I thought it would be cool to see how good it glides. So just put it into normal mode, which is acro mode of course, and let it glide in for landing. So, we did actually get some flight time with this slinger. And if I can trust my... Uh, display here max current was 16.7 amps it didn't didn't take any battery see still 16 volts 17 sets 
So um, I hope to get some footage from the uh, Yi I've installed here. Um, we took a Forest 3000 pack, VTC, uh, VT6, uh, VTC6, sorry, and uh, somewhere here is uh, CG. So um, I will cut down the power from this now because there's no need to have it running. Not necessarily because we got anything that could overheat because that's not, not the fact but simply because it doesn't matter so um well at long landing it turned around and ripped the hinge up here the, the servo hinge here um that's a pity i'll have to change that um it got a little loose here due to the harsh landings but i think that's something you have to take into account because it's all due together and uh Let's say for two landings and uh, they didn't end too well, still looks good. Still looks good. So, yeah, um, this motor you can see it's an e 2507 1800 kV with a gem fed flash 2 uh, 6 by no 7 by 4 2. Uh, does a good job, very economic. And I hope next time to have a GoPro hanging there and some walk snail so I can see where I go. Other than that, nothing great to report. Others that we are being invaded by a sock of sheep, which are supposedly going to eat us in uh, no time. So we are off because otherwise we get snatched and we'll be seeing you next time. Exactly, next time. And the next time should be with FPV. So I installed some walk snail and this is not that easy as it looks because this wing is designed to fly analog, not digital. You can see no placement that will help you doing that uh, ventilation for the digital air units, uh, holdings, uh, mounts for antennas, uh, some other stuff like that. Of course you can do holes like I did in the middle here, but uh, well yeah, that was not that easy. Further the management to make that air unit fit into that position and still get ventilation was a pain in the behind too. So yeah, I would love to see a V2 of the Slinger, which is focused on digital FPV and maybe some more, well, wingspan like a meter or such. But hey, Christmas is still far away. So I went to the field again and thought this time, this time we will give it everything we got. And um, well, um, that was how it should fly. Yet I was on my own and had to launch myself. So I decided I give auto launch a shot and um, <clears throat> having said that the Yi was on board again you can see that worn out lens in the middle and it was back to 1080p not 4k as i desire so sorry for the blockiness in the image but we will give it a try and i will try it myself so hold your hats ladies and gentlemen this is launch with inaf 6.1 and i succeeded apparently well i bought it uh, the auto launch mechanism by hitting some of the sticks too far and uh, well we did, did still fly and yes goggles on the head this is FPV and well I was in control cool stuff as everything was feeling good I started to do a bit of auto tuning getting the axis styled in and correcting the feet forward value and you see it goes sideways we are rolling a bit we are pitching a bit and uh, that's how the roll goes feels good it was fun to fly it got a bit calmer and uh, i forgot to record the dvr but you know happens it was gusty that day and you can see as i am near the ground everything is shaking up a little bit more because yeah, yeah it's just a small wing after all right so you can see I get my shakes here and try to uh, follow and tail and way the road here. And uh, after all, it's pretty fun. Try to climb a bit and get a feeling for how it behaves and stroll around on this little battery, of course. And uh, you can see it can fly calm. There's no stabilization added in any way in the camera motion. So yeah, it's, what you see is what I saw, what I felt, what was flown, to be honest. Now it's time for the landing and uh, I'm just gliding in and uh, saying to myself, well you've been lucky so far, I'm trying to get it down one piece after all. But yeah, we we'll come in gently and have a look at it. It's just okay. After that flight it was of course time for me to strap on the GoPro Hero 11 Black 
and uh, well, oh, and then it will launch again, and then of course take some high def 4K um, stabilized footage. So here's how it went. This view may be seen a bit awkward because you can see the stabilized the 4K footage from the GoPro in the center and my OSD screen upright and uh, the Vox nail didn't uh, stabilize, of course. So, um, you can get a glimpse on the values and the things, and this is uh, how it looks when you put a GoPro on it. And I can tell I like it! Then I had the feeling I had to do some speedruns, some low flybys and such things. And I remember I was flying with uh, my LG HG2 pack and I found it wasn't that... Um, well, it didn't give that energy like the BTC6 pack did, so yeah. Um, I took some turns, uh, followed the road and then I went for a landing just to check out how this would be because the last level was a bit, yeah. But you see, this uh, is uh, trouble free when you turn into the wind and uh, um, yeah, watch it, just watch it. <laughs> Should I say about it? Went, went good. When you look at it now and we fly over this fuselage, you will encounter and see that I just glued on the antennas with hot glue and did some markings in the front, a hole, a big hole, and I thought this would be enough, but uh, as, as soon as I went below 80-90 uh, kilometers, the, uh, the, the, the VTX of Walksnail would begin to overheat because it was just way inside of the fuselage. That was a problem. So. Um, yeah, I switched the battery and saw I give it another flyby, another fly, another launch, and see if I can um, confirm my my experiment there and my uh, assumption that 80 kilometers wouldn't be enough. So yeah, we are. I won't commentate that much this time. You'll have to watch it and uh, well, perhaps enjoy it. The GoPro really makes a difference, you can see how calm the image is, and that's really desirable, but it has its price. Of course, weight, and the weight will just limit your battery. So the question was, how far would you maybe reach with a 3 amp hours battery? I'm trying to push the limits and we have already, well, spent 2.2 or 3 amp hours in this pack, uh, which is a, VT6, a VTX6 pack. As you can see, it's time to turn home slowly, to get home, to make it home. Just tuning the values as a feeling was a bit too shaky on the roll axis. I don't know if I'm finished, but I thought it helped a little bit. Maybe it's just placebo, you know. I twitched on it, it's good. <laughs> Coming in for landing now, you can see how good a job the GoPro does. And, uh, well, yeah, it's not perfect, of course, but uh, oh, it looks pretty decent, doesn't it? It's pretty gusty down here and uh, I was almost in the hatch, uh, but here we go for the landing and uh, the big green, that's, uh, that's all I feel. Yeah. gusty out here now. The wind is just uh, flowing the final pieces of my um, scalp away <laughs> and I uh, managed to land uh, in good shape and time. Well, what can I say about the slinger after I managed to launch myself, which is the most important part of the uh, um, development you have when you have a new plane, you just have to figure out how to launch it and if you can launch it, that's good and if you can launch it by yourself, even better. So yeah, I can launch it by myself by now, that's good and I'm happy about it. Well. What did I fly today? I did the uh, launch with, uh, let me see, I just uh, pan the camera, uh, swing the camera around, yeah, like so. 
Okay, I did launch with the GoPro 11 today and the second launch and um, I can tell you that changed everything of my setup because if you look into it, um, aside of it, uh, it is a bit off from the gluing, but that's no problem. Um, installing walk snail on it is somewhat a uh, pain in the behind for me because uh, the holes here for the camera is of course for a normal 90 by 90 millimeter. But this is, is a 90 by 90 millimeter camera which has a hole in the middle. Walk snail has two holes above or beneath that so no way but taping it in and that's exactly what I did. Um, doing uh, digital video you will have to do some ventilation and you can see there's not much ventilation planned for the slinger so you have to be um, well creative a bit so I hope to do so and uh, I did some holes there which has some holes in the button so the airflow should go in there more or less more as my finger I can point at it there yeah uh, more or less and uh, I can tell you at a speed about uh, above 90 kilometers an hour there's enough uh, wind cooling down the VTX inside otherwise you'll be getting the overheating message as you might will see in this video as I recorded it on the DVR well okay other than that um, you know when you build that thing and you never know what comes down and how it comes down I took some piece of that it's uh, just plain foam and I placed it as a bumper in the front so what no matter what happens if the battery gets off and it gets off on rough landings it will bump into that and that's okay um, well and there we are again we have those battery packs uh, it's for cell uh, VTC6 cells from Sony Murata well yeah um, do they, they do their job well and um, that's uh, the best uh, compromise and weight and power you can get for this especially when you carry a such heavy camera like me um, others you can see here there is a uh, Matic F405 WMN smart and tiny thing connected to it all and there's some um, Express LRS from Beta FPV and Nano and Nano RX, which are plushed uh, plumped into those holes here. Hmm. Not exactly a design for that, but well, it works. Well, nothing else special here. We can look at the motor. The motor is something uh, I didn't expect to show up here. It's uh, Ichin, which is rebranded, of course. It's an Ichin uh, 2507 with 1800 kV and a gem fan flash with uh, six, no, seven by four inch. And uh, it works good. It works good. You can fly pretty economic with it and you can uh, break hell loose with it. Um, goes up to about 30 amps if you just push it or a bit above, depending on how hard you push it. And this will do fine. Otherwise, cruising with three amps, no problem. Then we got Emacs servos. Let me focus here. Focus, please. Emacs servos. Yes. And uh, some uh, cheapy uh, rods here. And well, on the other side, the same. Well, fancy color up. And now, after it has flown, it's time to make it fancy. Fancier than it is. Um, at this point, thanks for my mate Michael for printing this one for me. Uh, he's my. <laughs> primary printer currently he says well go buy a printer I said yes but you know when will I really print and you are so good at it so yeah we managed to make some agreements and this way so at this point thanks Michael for all your efforts this is really very paying off and now I will have to fix this because this is flimsy I don't like it and uh, well this hot glue here will help out and more ventilation I guess well that's it for the moment the parts in it. Yes, um, of course, you will find all my parts I used in the description and they are linked to a special shop where you can get all those two things, I uh, think, uh, aside of the motor, everything else. And uh, just go there and look and you'll find your parts at the shop that's new and uh, I would uh, recommend buying there because I do myself. Haha. <laughs> okay, well, that's it. So what do you think? Will you print a slinger from Titan Dynamics? It's um, not that um, intuitive for guys with uh, digital gear, but if you got analog, uh, you are a bit, would like to be a bit creative, 
Well, this can do. So I will go and find the limits for that. And uh, I can tell you, we will see this, seeing this plane often in the future. For now, this is it. Um, I'll head back to the studio and uh, shortly head over the comments to myself in the office. Okay, back in the office and thanks for the handover from myself. <laughs> well, um, there was just one flight I wanted to show you a little bit, a glimpse of. I'll put some images somewhere on the screen. And uh, the final thing I wanted to show you is what I finally did to the Slinger to make it, well, it's, it's um, ventilation better. So I mentioned that I made some holes in the beginning. I don't know. You can see it, but these are pretty massive, those holes. So basically I just grind it in with a Dremel and the Dremel tool and made a big hole here. I don't know if you can see it like so, yeah. And uh, that helped a lot with the ventilation. Additionally, I just uh, made two more openings here on this side and the same on that side. And that helped a lot. So in case you run digital with this one and uh, want to kill down your unit, well, this is the way to go, or this is a way to go, not the way, because maybe it's not the best. Got another proportion for, a proposal for this one, um, but whether this has to be tested. My wingman had a brand good idea. So, what did I do? Uh, if you remember the foam, I just uh, dug out something here, if you can see it in the foam, and added some ventilation from below, so it won't rip any antennas off like it did in the final video, in the final flight. So. I hope this will help a lot. So we'll see about that. And uh, well, that's all there is to it. Uh, oh, that's how the shape is after it's glued again. And it needs to fly pretty soon. And we'll wait for that. And yeah, um, looking forward to it. Hang on, we'll be see you again. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe. Don't forget button. to hit the subscribe. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. That would be awesome.